American football in Finland. That's how good he is. That's definitely the best offensive player. He could play receiver, quarterback, or running back if he needed to. Try to make them have a run game, which we know that they really don't have. I like to say he's kind of like, he kind of does like he's playing Madden when it comes to the playoffs. He starts doing a lot of weird stuff that you think can only happen on video games, and he gets away with it. But he ain't better. But in my opinion, he ain't better than Jabbar Harris. I'll take Jabbar Harris all day. Put that on the podcast, too. American football in Finland. The voice in your ears right now is Perfect Purvis, back at it again for another great episode of American Football in Finland. On this week's show, we'll discuss off-season training and the different ways it can be done to benefit football players and teams. My first guests this week are Evan Harrington and Dwayne Wood. I'm just going to ask you straight up, like, what do you think the focus should be for these players as they get ready for another season? Like, Evan? anything involved, really. I just want to know what do you think first the of focus all, should be. First of all, off-season means I got to take a break because I've been playing football the whole season. So yeah. you're lucky if you can get some guys to actually do some sort of off-season training. But I would say the biggest thing is, man, working out. Like, these guys just – it's just like here you here you gonna <laughs> teach these guys how to how to lift weights, how to work out. I mean, and that's that's the thing. People people aren't as cautious of their body as they are in the states, and which makes no sense at all because in the states we have a huge obesity problem. But I, I'm just saying, like here you can eat like crap and not go to the gym, and you won't get fat because you don't have all the extra stuff in your food. Yeah. Versus back home, versus back home, you know, uh, you can't do that. You know, even if I didn't play a sport back home, you still had those guys who are in the gym because I'm just in the gym. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a meathead. You know, just want to be in the gym. Here, it's not like that. It's not like that. So I think the biggest thing is just trying to get your guys to go to the gym and be prepared for the for the season or the real off season because you can always run them and everything, but. Guys out here that just aren't physically strong, in my opinion. What about you, Dwayne? Well, we've always lifted well, and we've always been blessed with guys wanting to lift. I mean, I coached them myself, but I tell you, even the weightlifting studios don't want to have you anymore. They're all into fitness. They don't want you pumping iron. They don't want you deadlifting. They don't even want to see you do a power clean. So it, it gets extremely hard for us to even find a place to lift weights right now we have no place to lift weights and that's like the first time in my 30 years over here that we don't have a place to lift weights and we're begging people to let us in and they're just going like we're not interested you guys are grunts we don't want grunts we want we want little tight suits where guys are doing ballerina or whatever but not lifting weights so that's hard for us so for us we're outside and we're practicing all winter as long as they allow us bad thing is it's from 8 30 at night till 10 10 o'clock at night which is a little bit ridiculous uh, there would be the possibility to train earlier but they save that for the 50 year old managers so they can get out there at seven o'clock until 8 30 and we have to come out after the 50 year old managers are done and we have to practice from 8 30 until 10. and i find that just completely ludicrous i mean asinine let the kids play come on don't need the rich, wealthy guys out there taking up the places for the kids to play. I mean, I, I understand they want to practice too, but kids first, I hope. So we we practice a lot and we do our best. We have had uh, issues this year with offensive linemen. We had some that retired and we haven't been blessed like we've always been blessed in the past. So that makes it even tough to practice because doing drills is nice, but the kids want to play at the end of the day. Yeah. Exactly. So if you don't have an offensive line, well, it kind of looks like flag football, right? Pretty much. Yeah. You, you so don't know what to do when you thing, get Weightlifting has got harder for us. Being able to play has gotten harder for us, putting us at 8.30 till 10. We're happy we have a turf field. But I would like to have us both more weightlifting and more football. Three months so, off, you, you do whatever you want to. You go with your girlfriend, you go party, you travel the world. I don't care. After that, you report. We have practice. Okay. Three months to do what you do. I think for me, one one big thing that's kind of crazy about the off season is I don't I don't agree with the take three whole months off and do nothing. Like 
um, kind of a little bit of what you said earlier, Evan, was that you got to know your body and you got to respect your body. If you go through a football season, like I don't know how you went through it, but there were certain things you did physically to, to compete. Now, when you stop that completely, and I know this from firsthand from me stopping from playing this last season, um, I took two weeks off after our last game and woke up one day and my back was knotted up because I hadn't been running. I go to a physio and she tells me, yeah, your back is like curved. Like, why is it curved? I was like, well, I just been, you know, sitting on the couch. <laughs> she was like, so do you have like a firm couch? I was like, no, that thing's soft. I've been sitting on it, laying down, you know, relaxing. She was like, well, the problem with that is your body has got a, a used to this like system of you running and your muscles have been tight. So now they're so loose that it messed up your spine. So I had to actually go to physio for about a month where I'm doing these different exercises to keep my my back muscles active. You're getting old. That too, I guess. So. I mean, you can you can catch me on this field, and I still I'm still moving fast than a mother. But the thing about it was that, and this woman, like she told me, like I don't know how you physically are alive right now because a lot of your like alignment is like off. And she, and I was like, well, I don't know. I, I had a good season, you know. I feel like I did good. She's like, well, I guess your body was adjusting to the sport, and now that you've taken the sport out, your body doesn't know what to do. Like, okay. your your muscles are used to being a certain way, and now they're not. So your body is trying to like adjust itself, but it can't. So like, she had me, she had me do this like physio program, and it was pretty awesome. Like, I was doing some weird stuff, but. It, it just kind of reminded me of the fact that even though it's off season, you can't just say, you know what, I'm done. Now, obviously, my age plays into a factor. I'm 31 years old. If I was 19, I probably could take three months off and be all right. Mm -hmm. But you also got to realize that, too, that these are habits that you don't want to have kids have either, though. I don't want, I don't want my, my players getting accustomed to the fact that, you know what, for a long period of time, you can do nothing, and then you can play football, and you'll be all right. Because the older they get, and the more, I guess, the more, I guess, the older they get, I guess, yeah, that's all I am is old. The older you get, the more your body is going to change, and you need to be able to adjust with it. I think in the offseason, I like to have players take some time off. Uh, three months is excessive to me, Dwayne. I okay. give them about a month to do nothing. And then after that month, you need to start doing something. Now, you don't need to – you don't have to be lifting heavy or running a lot, but you need to be doing some jogging, some stretching. Uh, yoga is big now. It's good to, for the flexibility. Um, you need to be doing something and keeping, keeping your heart rate up. I want your heart rate up so your cardio doesn't fall off too much so that when we get to that maybe three months later and we start going football, that you can slide into it. Don't you hate that when you start football practice, you got to get everybody in condition? That, that, that's a waste of time, having to condition people at football practice. We need to be playing football. So it, in your, in your offseason, you need to be conditioning yourself to a certain level. Like I like to say about 75% of what you can do. You get to about 75, you come back. That's it, 75%? Of conditioning. Like, <laughs> like – Okay, I can run six gassers in a minute at my peak. So when I get here, I can run six gassers at like a minute and a half. You know, like I want to be close, but I don't have to be all the way there because we have time. We have time. And I, I want you to enjoy your off time, but I don't want you to come back and be a totally – like I got to – like, oh, we worked you up all through the season. Now you're here. And then when you come back, I got to start over? Like that's a waste of my time. Yeah. I misstated myself. We don't we don't have team activities for three months. They of course are <laughs> lifting weights. That's for sure. Doing well, yeah. what but do. also the mm -hmm. self. Um, that's the honor code too, though. The honor code is tough because mm -hmm. you'll get some players that are in there every day, and then you'll get some players who are like, you know what? Got this grown man strength. I'm gonna let it ride. <laughs> I'm gonna let it yeah, ride. Man. The, the the off season is a tough one, man. Here in Europe, I would say the the off season that's a that's a tough thing to tack to tackle because you go through those cycles. It's like 
and I'm sure Dwayne can attest to this more than I can, him being here longer, you have a cycle where you'll have 10 or 11 of your U19 guys coming up. You're like, hey, I'm good. I got yeah. these players coming out. Those guys are gone. And then you have those years where it's like one guy came up and I've got <laughs> about eight leaving. It's like, man, like what am I going to do? I, I have to either intensify the offseason or shorten the offseason and get ready to work with what I got to see what I got so I can properly prepare for what I have. You know, so I think it just all depends on the year before. And the year before, if you were successful, you got to anticipate for those long, those guys who've been playing a while and they finally won a championship or something. I'm like, ah, I'm good. I'm gone. Then you're like, man, scrambling around, you know. So it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot that – that plays into your off season, and I think it first starts with how your year went that year before. If you like the AFF podcast, be sure to check out my website, perfectpurpose.com, for more football. I have new articles published daily about football in Suomi, interview articles on import players from around the globe, and I dabble in the interest topics about different aspects of American football on the international level. If you want more football, go to perfectpurpose.com. And follow me as I observe football around the world. Next up on American Football in Finland, Durante Smith and I continue the discussion about off-season training. What do you think is some of the better ways to do off-season training? Like, you know, in the States, people think I'm crazy when I try to tell them this. In the States, you play football. When the season is over, you don't grab footballs. You don't put on pads <laughs> and you don't do football <laughs> drills. You go to the gym, gym. the sprint coach is cursing you out for the next four to five months. <laughs> I remember being in college, and we had to we had to do reverse bear crawls up a hill. And I heard, <clears throat> and a guy, yes. we doing, yeah, we had a stadium with that little hill. We doing reverse bear crawls up a hill. Um, a guy, a, a freshman, obviously, freshman's like, why the fuck are we doing this? You know, mumbling underneath his breath. But the strength coach Damn. is standing right next to him. Trends coach say, you know why the fuck we doing this? Because we can. I'm like, what does that mean? Because like, we can, motherfucker. I'm like, oh, shit. This is what we got to deal uh, with. Okay. And, and, like, those moments. Like, obviously, I don't think doing reverse bear crawls up a hill will help you be a better football player. But there's, but. There, there's obviously some method to the madness that every college – football program, every high school football program, when they have off season, they get rid of the football helmet and pads. They get rid of the footballs. Mm -hmm. I think we maybe had like one, we might have seven on seven like once a week after like two months of not having any football interaction whatsoever. But you don't focus on the actual playing football because your body cannot handle playing football year round. Something that happens here in Europe that is crazy to me is and most of the sports, like here in Finland, we got fin- we got hockey, we got soccer, and we got basketball. If you play any three of those sports, you practice year round, and during season, you practice four to five days a week. Out of season, it's three to four days, and then you get a one month break in in between your seasons. I I remember someone telling me that oh, this guy isn't playing on the um, basketball team this this month because he overtrained. I'm like, what the hell is overtraining? Well, overtraining is doing repetitive movements so much that your body fatigues. And that's Mm -hmm. what's happening with these new... um, It's been happening in Europe for a while with American football players who get hurt a lot easier because they've been playing football year-round. And then Mm -hmm. also in the States, the epidemic is kids who decided to play one sport year round are usually get they're not making it to high school sports because their body is is done or the kids are just done of doing it over and over so mm-hmm. obviously i'm going the long way around this this is why i wish you had more time what do you, what do you think is a, a good way for people to do off-season programs when it comes to okay the season's over the next season doesn't start for let's say six months what, do you, what would you suggest to people who are trying to, like, create a program or people trying to work out by themselves in the offseason? Like, what would you suggest they do? One thing when I, I remember is, like, literally with my little league coach when I was playing quarterback, 
I was like just how the Brazilians and how the people are in Europe. Like, man, hey, it's fun. Let me do this like every day. Oh, I ain't got nothing to do. Let's go to the park, throw some passes. Ah, right, yeah. what you doing tomorrow? Man, let's run some routes. But my little league coach, this is literally, twelve. I was seven, seven till I was twelve years old. He was just like, man, after the season, forget football. Go do something else. You right. Know, go play video games. I know you like video games. Go, go mess with girls. Go do something stupid. So <laughs> when I got <laughs> to college, uh, my last two years in college, after junior college, my coach he looked at me. And he was just like, "So you want to play pro ball? Or you want to play overseas?" I was like, "Yeah." He was just like, "Always remember, in the off season, take time to enjoy yourself, because if not, you're gonna end up hating the sport, or you're gonna end up getting hurt." So I took that. I, I actually took that in, took that to thought. So, to for those wanting to develop a program, like after a season, you know, give your guys like two months off. So you know, like especially here in Brazil, you know, their girlfriends run everything. <laughs> Got a yeah, girlfriend yeah. down here, they be like, "Hey, hey, I see. I know you play football, but you gotta have time for me." So, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like the team down here, once. We ended our last game. We practiced for another three weeks, and now everybody's on vacation until uh, March. When March comes back around. It's time for the guys to get back into the weight room, you know, start running. Even though I don't want it, I won't be here. <laughs> yeah. I'll be in Germany. Um, they probably going to pick up the pad and trying to go back at it uh, full tilt again. But one of the biggest things is, you know, give your guys some time to rest. When they have time to rest and you come back, you know, get them in the weight room. Don't even let them touch a ball. If you're going to do drills, do drills, like, with no weights. You know, certain things like that, just to keep the guys fresh. Um, one thing that I did when I was in Minnesota, cold, not cold like Finland. But no, one no. thing I did when I was up there in the off season, I started playing hockey. What? Why? Yeah, man. You know, you, you, I, you, get, you still get to hit somebody. So, you hey, know, that, you that, know that, that, here in Finland, <laughs> a lot of uh, – I mean, here, obviously, for American football, we have to, like, get players from other sports. Hockey is the mm -hmm. number one sport that translates. Now, hey. me, I can't skate for shit. But <laughs> those guys who can skate, when they come over to running on, like, turf and grass, their technique is a little unorthodox. But a lot of those mm -hmm. guys have the same – you got to have a strong back. You got to have strong legs. You got to be able to change direction. You got to be able to control your body to change direction and explode yeah. at the right time. It transfers so well. And you get to hit people on ice or, in this case, on the field. But <laughs> I don't want to hit the ice. That shit hurt, too. You hit that ice. That ice cold. That shit hurts and it's cold. As far as creating a program, always give your, your athletes, your, your guys, you know, just a little time to rest. So they won't end up being injured or hating football or the case here in Brazil. You know, they got to stop because the girl said that they spend too much time playing football. But you got to make time. You got to make time for you gotta, love. You got to make, love, love. make time for love. Hey, love, love, love is good. Love is good. I love love. <laughs> yeah, well, love. My, my thing about the off-season training, um, obviously I'm very particular because I've seen it done a lot of different ways. One thing that's really good that's a kind of a newer thing going on here in, in Europe is uh, a lot of teams are kind of getting into the whole yoga in the off season, trying to get the team yoga set up with a yoga instructor. Yeah, me personally, since I started being like an international player, like you don't have that trainer like you used to do in the States. In the States, in the off season, it's pretty simple. I go hit the weights hard. I go go to the hot tub for a little bit. I go to a trainer, get a little massage on whatever aches me, and I keep going. I'm rejuvenated, you know? But out here mm -hmm. in Europe and even out there in Brazil, you might not have that type of situation where you can have that done all the time, you know? I mean, you could probably get to it, but obviously it becomes a, like a money thing. And you can't get everybody on the yeah. team to have that access as well. So you got to figure out ways. The number one thing to do after playing a football season is to recover. You have to find yeah. out a way to recover. And recovery doesn't mean start lifting a million pounds of weights and running. Recovery means strengthen the small muscles in your body. 
strengthen your ligaments and your joints, the things that end up ruining seasons. Being hurt. <laughs> Do some uh, goddamn calf raises and ankle flexes so that your Achilles makes it through the next season, you know? Like, these are the things you yeah. work on for about a month, month and a half, and then you ease your way back into, you know, doing a certain type of functional lifting. A lot of people, they like to just do these, these power lifting workouts to be football players, and I'm telling them, dude, you will be so stiff. The one thing about football is you cannot be stiff. They're like, Purvis, you got the same body frame as me, yet you're 20 to 30 pounds heavier. I was like, yeah, that's because where I got muscles, you got fat. Muscle weigh more than <laughs> fat. And they're like, well, how are you? And I've had people tell me before, they're like, you don't look that fast. I'm like, that's fine. I ain't got to look fast. Catch me on this field, though, and you're going to see. I got speed, and <laughs> I got to change your direction. And people, I mean, and if you listen to this, hey, I'm 31 years old. I can still move, goddamn. If you listen to this, <laughs> hey, perfect purpose, I'll tell you right now. Once you get speed, you don't lose it, okay? And I tell everybody this nah. all the time. I'm fast. I'm not being cocky. I'm not boasting. It's a fact. I'm fast. If you put me in any running event with anybody in the world, I'm going to be in the top part. I ain't saying I'm the fastest. You know, I'm not Olympic speed. Yeah. When it comes to football speed, I, I have speed, so that's easy. What separates mm. me and what separates a lot of the better athletes is being able to control and harness that speed, acceleration, mm. change of direction. Now, that comes from explosive movements. If you're squatting 8 million pounds, yeah, you're going to have some strong legs, but you, when are you going to get to use them? You're going to be. Only yeah. if you touch me. If you can <laughs> catch me, you can use them. But if you can't catch me, I ain't worried about how strong you are. Like, I don't like, care oh, you less about how much you bench press. <laughs> you, if you can bench press a building and you can and squat a whole city, yet you're not quick enough to, you know, get me in the hole, then it doesn't matter. So in the off season, this is what people need to work on. You need to work on separating yourself. Everybody, anybody can lift weights. You can get the skinniest yeah. motherfucker you've ever seen, put him in a weight room for a year, and now he's a bodybuilder because anybody can do that. What you can't do is get a skinny motherfucker you ever seen, put him in a weight room, and then put him on a football field. That ain't going to work. You can grab a player and have him do a million football drills. If I know how to do football drills, but I don't have the physical assets to do them better or to do mm -hmm. them well, then I can't compete. So in this offseason, this is when you get your body ready to do what you need to do on the football field. You, you want to get as strong as you can without being stiff. You want to do functional movements. You want to be explosive. Get, get as much explosion as you can in your body so that you can change direction. So you have to mix in running and weights. You can't just go to the gym and then never run, show up, and then be like, okay, I'm not going to pull a hamstring. God damn it, that's the first thing you're going to do is pull a hamstring. <laughs> so um, Call of Duty. Down. Yeah. You, you got these guys that, like you said, you take three or four months off and – People are being very – you're very optimistic. I mean, I'm not trying to talk down to anybody, but you're very optimistic. You're like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm hitting the gym hard. When I come back next year, I'm going to be real good. And then what happens is you're hitting this gym hard. You're putting on all them kilos, you know. I think last time I was in Brazil, I was bench pressing 150 kilos, you know. A little brag right there. <laughs> a little, a little, a little something, something. I got it on record. It's on Instagram. I had to show you I wasn't that. But – um. So you get all these weights up, and then you come to play football, and you're doing the stretches. And you're like, man, uh, don't feel that good to be doing these stretches. Doing these long <laughs> stretches. And then you start running, and muscle memory is a motherfucker, I'm telling you. Muscle memory is a motherfucker because your body remembers the last time you played football. So instinctively, you'll try to make the same movements you did when you were not as strong not as big and not as stiff. So what happens mm -hmm. is you go back to this sport after three months of becoming a power lifter, you come back to football, and then you're pulling muscles or you're getting injured in the first game because you had a tight muscle all through practice, but you were holding back. Mm -hmm. And then in the first game, you go you're full to go speed. All out. Yeah, and you pull a muscle, and it's, it's all because of your off-season program. Even though people might say, well – 
It just that's what happens in the sport. No, that's not what happens in the sport. That's what happens when you don't properly prepare. I've been playing American football for over 25 years, going on 26, 27. I'm taking this year off though. But I've been playing American football <laughs> for over 25 years. You'll be back next year, everybody. I've had be back next year. I've had <laughs> I'm just playing on even years. I'm taking odd years off for retirement. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only play on odd years. Because I took 14 off, I took 16 <laughs> off, and now I'm taking 18 off. Yeah. So I'll be back in 19 probably. Who knows? But <laughs> back to what I'm saying. Was, uh, you do this, uh, you come back to the sport after having three or four months off, and your body tries to do something that you can't do. What, what I was getting at about me is that I've played football for over 25 years. I've only had one major injury, and that injury occurred without contact. I tore my ACL. Now, was it a freak accident? Probably. Was I shaking somebody out their boots? Yes, that happens. It was a non-contact, <laughs> it was non-contact injury to my ACL, but I'm 100% sure that it had to do with the preparation I had before. I had a very difficult uh, fall camp that year. I was lifting more weights than I ever lifted in my life, and I was running faster than I had ever run in my life. Like I was at my peak condition, and my body couldn't handle it. After mm-hmm. I tore the ACL, my coach shut down my squats. That was the last time I squat over 600 pounds. He say, you weigh 180 dripping wet. You're going to break <laughs> your damn spine. I don't care how strong you are. You're going to break your damn spine. So, and then after that, I was only allowed to do functional lifts. I didn't do leg press because that's stupid. But I was doing lunges and moving with weight and doing um, functional movements with weight and resistance because it was helping me mm-hmm be explosive without just getting strong. Cause my hamstrings and my quads were strong as shit, but my tendons were weak. And that's why I tore my ACL because my ACL couldn't hold the weight of my hamstrings and quads. Cause they were so muscular and too muscular to that point that the ACL tap snapped, you know? That's what your tendons and ligaments are. Um, They're not built to be strong. They're built to connect. So if, they're stiff and not used. If your joints, your ligaments, everything that helps you change direction and be mobile, if that stuff is stationary for too long, it, it loses that elasticity, you know, something like that. I'm not a doctor. I shouldn't <laughs> keep talking about that. I'm going to let that go. What's up? Are you enjoying the AFF podcast? Damn right you are. Well, let the world know you enjoy the show. Follow AFF on the Podbean app. Just head over to AmericanFootballFinland.Podbean.com and hit that follow button. You can also find the podcast by searching for American Football in Finland on the Podbean app. On the last segment of American Football in Finland, John Booker and Garen Holly give much-needed insight on off-season training. In Europe... Football is kind of like a, a year-round thing here. Um, you have a, a season that lasts four or five months. You got to practice a couple months before the season. And then, obviously, you got to practice in the off season. You got to get ready for the season. And a lot of different teams, um, different levels, do it different ways. Some teams, as soon as, they, as soon as the season's over, they say, hey, let's take two, three weeks, maybe a month break, and then we're going to start lifting weights. And the, another team might say, let's take – two or three month break, and then we're going to start practicing. So what I want to ask you guys is what, what do you think is the best way to kind of prepare a team going from season to season? Let's say the season is just over. Uh, you're getting ready to start your off-season program. What do you focus on and what do you think is more beneficial for teams as they gear up for the next season? You need, you need a month minimum. You know, I don't think you should take two or three months or anything like that, but – a fresh mind is going to allow you to have a good off season. Some people say like, oh, we're in the gym the next day after our last loss. And I'm like, okay, well, I won't be there. <laughs> like, good for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, like after this year in Vasa especially, man, it took me probably a month just to feel fresh again, like a human being. And so I think the players definitely need that also. So, you know, for six weeks, depending on the length of your season, uh, if you're a championship team, that that's probably going to be a little bit shorter because if you go six weeks into the playoffs, the other teams have a, about a month maybe 
jump up on you in training, so you don't want to get left behind in that standpoint. Uh, but I think the off season uh, here, what we're doing is we have three days on the field, and the guys have a structured lifting program on their own. And when we're on the field, uh, we're focusing on like uh, flexibility, mobility. We we rotate the players around, kind of like circuits. Uh, so they're with their position coaches for about 45 minutes working technique or position specific training, you know, maybe offensive linemen working uh, slide boards or getting uh, like lateral movement drills and all that type of stuff. Not necessarily football drills, but position specific. Uh, and then we go into like mobility where they're working on their flexibility, some injury prevention type stuff. And then we do conditioning and I use conditioning uh, like right now, we're in kind of like the build up your oxygen type phase, not really get into like sprinting and like classic football conditioning. So uh, here we have really good resources. So we're able to do uh, a little bit more than most teams are able to do. And so our off season has like we've been able to structure it pretty much like a, a college would structure their off season because we do have our own gym. We do have an indoor uh, facility and we do have uh, a practice field. Uh, field surf that we have access to it at all times so that's a, a bonus Must that we got be going nice yeah 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 it's a it's <laughs> i'm not gonna lie this is by far the best setup i i've seen personally in europe i know there's other big teams that have you know their own facilities and all that good stuff but uh the partnership with coach university that's how you say it by the way it's not cock uh coach <laughs> 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 but no we our off season is is pretty well structured uh compared to like what most people are going to get in europe Speaking more on the off season, um, you two guys, you kind of you have a little bit more advanced off season than a lot of teams in Europe do. Um, you got the resources, um, Coach Holly's in Germany. You're in Turkey. You got the university kind of supporting you. What would you suggest to the smaller teams, um, Coach uh, Booker? You know, of course, Ben, that you were in Slovakia and you're in Brazil. They don't really have the resources that some of these more developed countries have. What would you suggest to maybe some of these local coaches or domestic coaches who are trying to do an off season, but they don't know exactly how to like structure? What would you structure for? I don't want to say like a brand new team, but let's just say one of those developing teams. You know, you got a lot of guys who are they're coming to practice. They don't know much about football. They don't have a background in lifting, and they just play the entire season. What would you suggest to some of these coaches of how to structure that off-season program? I mean, number one, reach out to someone. If, you, if you're not uh, educated or experienced in structuring an, a lifting program, uh, reach out to somebody. Find resources where someone can help you with that. Um, because I see a lot of guys, they'll just go, all right, guys, we're going to do this in the gym. You know, five sets of 15 straight bodybuilder workout, and that has nothing to do with <laughs> football. You know, and so like if you don't have the experience to do it, find someone that can help you. I don't think there's any city in Europe that doesn't have a local gym, no matter how small the city. There's a local gym. And my suggestion, what I did in Slovakia is I let the guys know that to be a part of this team, the gym is mandatory. It's not optional. Don't be afraid to demand thing of, things of your players. Uh, you can't say, hey, guys, we really need to work out, but don't demand that of them. I told new players, listen. Every workout costs three euros. The gym we had in uh, Ternava, Slovakia, I think it was three euros to, for like a one day visit. And I told him, like, look, man, two days a week, you're going to play You're going to pay three euros to go to this gym. And we're going to we're going to go there and train. And it's mandatory. And so if guys weren't able to go to that, they had their own workout and once a month to ensure that they're making progress. So I wrote their numbers and I could look at what their max is, the percentage of their max. And it should tell me what they're lifting. And if they're lifting the way they're supposed to, it'll tell you what your progression is going to be. So you could always confirm uh, that your guys are lifting if you're not there to watch them with their progress. And so, uh, but to sum it up, I would just say, don't be afraid to demand the gym of your players. You demand them to come to practice. You should demand them to go to the gym because you can't play American football without lifting weights. Yeah. Like Coach Booker said, um, just uh, ask, you know, we, we all don't have all the answers. You know, we, we have, we have pieces to the puzzle and, and like was like I just got a great idea from listening to Coach Booker, you know. Um Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, with the end of it. I mean, I know I have a, a good amount of our guys. I'd probably say seventy percent of our guys, you know, get in there and get after it the right way, but there's probably thirty percent that I know are 
finding reasons not to be in the gym. I don't. I know I don't demand it enough because I trust that most of them are doing it. But there are more. Or I just need to make it one of those clear things. So, um, yeah. So just um, just getting feedback from other coaches and and picking and taking pieces and, and just utilizing it. That's that's my my key to learning like for me i tell like when i talk to other coaches like coach holly you're going to get a message from me after this conversation i'm gonna pick yeah. you a lot yeah. for sure but like i always tell coaches man don't let your ego get in the way of your growth man like a lot of coaches are stuck in this like oh if i ask this coach how to do this i'm gonna look like an idiot man i tell people all the time teach me like i'm stupid yeah i don't know if you could like you know yeah, what I'm saying teach sense. me like i know nothing i want to know everything i don't care if you're a polish guy who's been coached for three years. Let me see what you got. If it makes sense, I'm going to steal some of it. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to steal some from you. I promise. American Football in Finland is now on iTunes. Please rate the show and subscribe today. If you really like the podcast, follow AFF on the Podbean app. Search American Football in Finland and hit that follow button. And for all you loyal AFF listeners, we are now accepting Podbean patrons. Click become a patron on the AFF page and pledge your loyalty. Thanks for listening. American Football in Finland.